Hello my friend, thank you very much for watching. I am Michael and I would like to give you 11 wildlife photography tips that have absolutely nothing to do with gear, but everything to do with getting amazing photos of wildlife. Right off the bat, I want to make it clear that I'm not suggesting that gear isn't important. It is very important. I have personally invested a lot of money into gear and I love my cameras and my lenses. I will, however, argue that gear is just one aspect of wildlife photography, and in order to get the most out of it, you need to master a lot of other things. So let's jump right in. 11 wildlife photography tips that have nothing to do with gear. My first tip is to tune your eyes and ears. And what do I mean by that? Well, very rarely do wild animals just parade out in front of you and pose so you can take pictures of them? <laughs> in most cases, it's a little subtle sound you hear, a subtle movement, or just some shape that looks a little bit different from the rest of the environment that will alert you to a wild animal. So really, your eyes and ears are the most important tools you have when you're out looking for wildlife to photograph. Let me give you an example. If you look at this photo here, I think you'll agree that it doesn't look like there's much interesting wildlife here to photograph. When in fact there is something that is very interesting and very much worth photographing. This little dot at the top of the tree is a pygmy owl. It's tiny and super easy to miss, especially if you don't know what to look for. Personally, I've spent a lot of time looking for pygmy owls, so I've tuned my eyes to recognize the shape and I can instantly pick it out from the rest of the noise. I've also learned what the pygmy owl's calls sound like, and with a tiny 7-inch bird like a pygmy owl, that's a huge help. My second tip is to slow down your pace. There are several reasons why this is a good idea. The most obvious one is that wild animals react to fast movements. They are unpredictable and it makes them nervous. So when you slow down your pace, it makes it much easier to approach. The second reason is that if you're kind of just booking it through a habitat trying to get from A to B as fast as possible, you're just going to miss so much of what's going on. And going back to tip number one about you know using your eyes and ears, if you're just hurrying, you're not really going to pick up on those subtle nuances, the little sounds, the little shapes and movements that alert you to wild animals. So slow down your pace. My third tip is to always pay very close attention to your subject. Especially if you're you know, shooting large mammals that can be dangerous to humans, you want to make sure that you're, you know, you're not invading their personal space and making them aggressive. So you really have to pay attention to all the little signs they're displaying. Vice versa, we don't want to stress the animals. We don't want to cause them harm or to really have a negative effect on their behavior. And again, by paying close attention to your subject, you can tell when you're making them uncomfortable or when you've crossed the line. Fourth tip is to do your research. I'm very much into doing research before I go shooting for the simple fact that it increases my chances of success. If there's a specific area I want to visit, I read up on it beforehand so I kind of know what to expect and I have an idea of where I want to go. In the beginning when I was learning about wildlife photography, <laughs> One of the things I did was I wasted a lot of time looking for owls in habitat that had no owls. So, duh, that's a big waste of time. So when you're doing your research, some of the things I would look at is obviously, you know, certain areas, but I'd also read up on the animals that I want to, you know, take photos of. Uh, what's their behavior? What's their habitat? What do they eat? And so on. Really understand their behavior so that when you go out there, you're prepared. Fifth tip is to spend as much time as possible in nature. There really is no substitute for spending time in the field and really practicing your skills. My sixth tip is to get stealthy. Personally, I've been spending much more time shooting from hides or, you know, kind of concealing myself with uh, 3D camouflage and camo, camo nets and stuff like that. It, it makes a big difference when the animals don't know you're there and you're not having any impact on their behavior. And even if you're not like, you know, sitting in a hide or like full on camouflaging yourself, being stealthy is always an advantage. The more subtle you can be in your approach to taking photos of animals, the better. Tip number seven is to remember the basics. And by the basics, there's a couple of things that I mean. For example, 
shoot when the light is good. You know, that means the co first couple of hours after sunrise. It means the last couple of hours before sunset. It makes such a big difference. Another one is to you know get low. If the animal is low, you don't want to be sh shooting on an angle at an angle like this. It just does not look very good. So make sure that you're eye to eye, eye level with your subject, even if that means getting down in the mud. Tip number eight is to push yourself to be more creative. It's very easy to kind of become complacent with your photography or to just, you know, get comfortable with what you're doing. And lately, I've been spending a much more time kind of doing, uh, you know, shots with more environment in there. So instead of trying to, you know, get really, really close to a bird, for example, just isolate the bird. I think it's more interesting now to get a bit more environment in there. But nicer backgrounds, colors and stuff like that. I've been doing more backlit shots that I never used to do. And it really is a pleasure and it's a lot of fun kind of pursuing that part of photography. And also I think it results in more uh, artistic and pleasing images. The ninth tip is to be hard on yourself. So when you're looking at your own photographs, instead of looking for reasons why you know the picture you just took is absolutely awesome or making excuses, look for reasons why your image isn't perfect, you know, because then that will help you improve the next time you go, I like this, it's sharp, but the background is too messy. So be hard on yourself, and that way you can constantly push yourself, you can strive to become better and better all the time. Tip number 10 is to go out alone or in small groups. My experience is that if you go out in bigger groups that has a massive effect on the behavior of the wild animals, and in many cases it stresses them out. And I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, so I would go out alone because that's when I have the best experiences and I feel like that's when I have the least impact on the uh, animals that I'm trying to photograph. Either just myself or I go with one person I know very well and I know that we're kind of aligned in our approach to photography. My last tip is to always be respectful of nature. We humans are the guests in their environment and we don't want to have a negative effect on the habitat or the animals that live there. But always think about what you're doing and always ask yourself, am I crossing a line here? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like the tips here. I hope you found them somewhat inspirational. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. Thank you so much and have a great day.